Hi guys, welcome to this video looking at why simple covalent compounds have low melting points. Now, before we get on to explaining the property, it's really important for you guys to know what type of bonding you've got. In the exam, they won't turn around to you and say you've got ionic bonding or metallic bonding. They will give you the name of a chemical most likely and ask you to explain why it has a high melting point, why it doesn't conduct, why it does conduct, and so on. So you've got to be able to work out what type of bonding is going on to then work out the properties to then be able to explain it. So if we start off with how to work out whether something is covalent or not, nice and simply, if it's covalent, it is only made up of non-metals. So for example, if I have a look through this list of different chemicals, all I have to do is find out my non-metals. Remember, the non-metals are on the right in the periodic table, with hydrogen being my exception. Fe, that's a metal, that's iron. So straight away, I can rule that out, that is not covalent. NH3, nitrogen, that's a non-metal, it's on the right. Hydrogen, that's a non-metal. So I know NH3 is covalent. PbBr2, Pb is a metal, so it's not covalent. CH4, carbon is a non-metal, hydrogen is a non-metal, so I've got a covalent compound. Diamond and graphite are both allotropes of carbon, so they are things that are made up of carbon but have different structures. So if they're made up of carbon, which is a non-metal, they are both covalent. So how do I then work out whether I've got simple or giant covalent? Nice and simply, if it's simple covalent, it's got fewer atoms. So for example, water has only got three atoms, two hydrogen and one oxygen. Buckminster fullerene has got 60 carbon atoms. It's got a set amount. However, my giant covalent ones has got many atoms. So diamond, graphite, graphene, and nanotubes, they're the main ones you need to know. They can go on for thousands and thousands of carbon atoms. So usually, if it's got a certain number of atoms, it's simple covalent. If it's got thousands of them, like those four examples, it's giant covalent. So we go back to my examples. NH3, I've got four atoms, therefore it's simple covalent. CH4, I've got five atoms, so it's simple covalent. Diamond is giant covalent, it's one of the examples we've just been through. And the same with graphite, giant covalent. Okay, now I know how to work out whether I've got simple covalent or not. I need to remember the properties. Nice and simply, anything that's simple covalent will have a low melting point. It's the only type of bonding that has a low melting point. Also, all covalent compounds do not conduct electricity. There are a few exceptions, but not for simple covalent. So let's get back to the point of this video. Why do simple covalent compounds have low melting points? Nice and simply, every covalent compound has a shared pair of electrons. Every single covalent compound, every single covalent bond is strong. So the key thing to remember here is we are not breaking those bonds. Any time that you mention that those bonds are broken, you will lose all marks. So never mention covalent bonds being broken for simple covalent. What we are breaking is these weak intermolecular forces, the weak forces between the molecules. They're really easy to break, so not much energy is needed to break them. So you get one mark for saying weak intermolecular forces between the molecules, and one mark for saying not much energy is needed to break these weak forces. Okay, let's have a look at what the examiner can ask you. So I've got a couple of questions. The first one being, identify the simple covalent substance from the list on the right. So you have water, H2O, magnesium hydroxide, MgOH2, aluminium, and graphene. So which one of those is simple covalent? Which one only has non-metals and which one only has a few atoms involved? Remembering your exceptions, the ones that are giant covalent. Question two, explain why carbon dioxide has a low melting point. So again, we know it's simple covalent. That's the whole point of this video. What makes simple covalent special? Why does it have low melting points? Pause the video, have a go. We'll see how you've done it in a minute. Okay, let's go through. So the first question, which one is simple covalent? Well, the covalent ones, the ones that only involve non-metals are water and graphene. So we can rule out magnesium hydroxide and aluminium. Which one's simple covalent? That's the one with the fewest atoms. Remember, graphene has thousands of atoms. Therefore, we're looking at water, H2O. 
Question two, explain why carbon dioxide has a low melting point. It's all to do with our intermolecular forces. Now, if you can't remember the phrase intermolecular forces, say weak forces between the molecules. That's how you get the first mark. Then, not much energy is needed to break those weak forces. That's going to get you your second mark. So if you turn around and say, not much energy needed to break the weak intermolecular forces, that's two out of two. Just make sure you don't mention anything about breaking bonds. Remember, simple covalent bonds, any type of covalent bonding is strong. So you're not breaking those in simple covalent. You mention that, you get zero marks. Okay, I have got a review question for you. Hopefully you'll realize it's a very similar type of question. So it says, explain why chlorine is a gas at room temperature and it's worth two marks. So for this one, just think to yourself, if it's a gas at room temperature, it's got a low melting point. If it's got a low melting point, boiling point, it's simple covalent. Why do simple covalent compounds have low melting points? That's what the question is asking. If you want to have a go at it, if you want to answer it, put it in the comments. I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. That brings this video to an end. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.